You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. Was God Married? Part 2. The Death of the Goddess So, Francesca Stavrocopoulou closed her article Why the BBC's New Face of Religion Believes God Had a Wife saying, I can't help but wonder what the world would be like if the goddess remained. What I'd like to do in this podcast is to explore the evidence and try to answer her speculation. My answer may be different from hers, but at least we should make the attempt. The evidence comes mainly from the surrounding peoples, though the Bible may have some contribution to make, and this podcast can perhaps squeak into a series called Five Minute Bible. Most of Israel's neighbours had pantheons which included goddesses, prominently alongside gods. In Egypt, Isis was particularly important, and provided a kind of mother figure among the gods. She was widely venerated by both men and women. In Babylon, Ishtar was the most prominent goddess, and the huge and decorative gate that gave entry into the city and led to the most important temples was named after her. More locally, the evidence from Ugarit, which is the strongest evidence we have about Canaanite culture, shows the significant role of Anat, the sister and wife of Baal. She had a particularly important role to play in calling Baal back to life after he was killed by Mot, the god of the underworld and the dry season, and therefore in bringing rain for the new year. And basically, Anat's job was to cry and wail and mourn his death, slash herself with knives in order to bring him back to life. So, Francesca Stavrocopoulou's musing, I wonder what Israel would have been like, effectively, she's saying, if, instead of being erased by the writers of the Bible, Asherah, the consort of Yahweh, had been celebrated alongside Yahweh. First thing to say is that that word alongside is somewhat weaselly. The consorts of gods seldom exercise the same power and authority as their masters. Notice that Baal's name means master, lord or boss as well as husband. It was quite clearly the god who was in control, and his wife, like a good human wife, assisted him, aided him, and sometimes was honoured enough to stand in for him. It's also worth noticing that none of these surrounding cultures, despite their goddesses, gave to the actual women in the actual streets a significantly better role than ancient Israel. though. God knows ancient Israel wasn't good in its gender relations. All of the ancient world oppressed women. All of the ancient world perceived women as more or less chattels belonging to men. And Israel was really no exception, sadly. Now let's turn to the Hebrew Scriptures. Suppose, alongside Yahweh running through Scripture, we read about Asherah. That would this mean that we would view the Godhead as somehow including both male and female in a way that Scripture doesn't? It might, because many, many readers of Scripture have noticed the He and have chosen to notice the King imagery and the other male imagery for God and have failed to notice the female imagery for God in the Hebrew Scriptures. But that's a choice that readers have made. It's not present in Scripture itself. The Hebrew Bible, on the whole, avoids human imagery for God. Father imagery for God in the Old Testament is remarkably rare. Mother imagery is pretty much as common as father imagery. And among the other images, things like rock and lion are probably more common than either of the more human pictures. King is admittedly a common image. But would a king who had a wife have actually given a better status to women in the ancient world? The evidence is no. In my next podcast in this series, I'll draw your attention to some of that imagery and let you decide for yourself. Bye for now.